right bible-christian.org and this is gary pinnell glad to be with you we want to welcome you to our study on first john chapter 2 and uh, we also want to pray for our sister esther there in india and uh our sister Tina that ministered in India recently. But uh, Sister Tina, she had a fever as she was going, leaving. And so we prayed for her, but also want to pray now for our sister Esther in India, who has, um, sounds like a really bad cold, in the United States, we have that lots. In fact, we have some of the kids who are out yesterday just because of the cold situation. But uh, we're going to pray that the Lord would heal her body. And so, let's go to prayer. Thank you, God, for your love to us and how you care for us day in and day out. We do pray for those, especially like Esther right now and probably her family that are catching these uh, colds at this season of the year and also Lord that you'll just restore to health and strength we pray for our sister Tina thank you that she was able to minister there in India and uh, bring her to health and strength again as we know it takes a lot out of a, out of people as they work and serve you but then you restore us in your time and your way. So we thank you for your healing. Pray all these things and bless in the Bible study today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're ready to start. I know uh, Kathy there, it's good to see you there, and Madi and others that will be getting on. We, uh, I appreciate your prayers uh, for the ministry. Uh, we're not sure how many people actually watch the programs each day, but usually they're afterwards because we have it on YouTube. And by the way, if you would, when you go to YouTube, if you would hit uh, like and also subscribe, it doesn't cost anything, but that helps in the ministry as far as... Um, more people being able to see it. Uh, I appreciate it if you share with other people the Bible study. And even if each person shared it with one other person, that would go a long ways to help out uh, in getting the gospel out into the world. And then also we have on our Bible study, uh, as we show at the beginning, we have, uh, uh, thank you for your hearts and prayers and so on. Uh, love you folks. And and I will show you that on our uh, website here that each, every day we go in and put it on uh, shortly after on the news right here, like yesterday was First John chapter 1. And then today, God willing, we'll put on chapter 2 as soon as we can. Uh, but then just to Thank you for your prayers, and day by day, uh, I love teaching the Word, as you know, and I believe that it's the most important thing that we can do with our life is to share the good news with others. So let's go ahead in chapter 2 of 1 John. Again, we're still reading the things that John wrote. Uh, he was a man that the Lord loved and he loved him and uh, lived a ripe old age. He was the only one of the apostles that died without being martyred, but they tried to kill him several times and they just couldn't. And so he, le uh, at the end of his life, and we'll, God willing, in December, we'll look at another book that he had has written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and that is the book of Revelation. So let's go ahead and get started here. Started today with um, 1 John. Okay, 1 John and chapter 2. Okay, 
So it says, my little children. So John is writing to Christians. He's writing to believers. And it's not any particular church. It's for the whole church, for all of us. Uh, sometimes they do write to churches uh, to because it gives a background and uh, there, but all that the, the apostles wrote is inspired of the Lord. And, uh, and it's not to say that they couldn't write other things. Uh, Paul wrote, it seems like, a couple other letters to Corinthians that were not part of Scripture. But here John is writing, and this is definitely part of Scripture. He says, my little children, so born again, believers in Christ, uh, which we are called, uh, they we become children of God, don't we? When we receive Christ into our heart and life, and that's First John, or excuse me, Saint John, chapter one, verse twelve. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become sons of God, even to those who believe in his name. These things I write to you, so that you may not sin. Okay, so he wants us to live a godly life, a holy life, a righteous life. And but uh, there we will not be perfect until we get to heaven. And even none of the Old Testament saints were perfect. They were blameless and righteous sometimes because they kept short accounts with God. But <clears throat> if they did sin, they asked God's forgiveness. And if anyone sins, we have an ad advocate, which is a lawyer or attorney, with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So Jesus, what is his role right now in heaven? He is praying for us. He's advocating on uh, to the Father as Satan comes and says, oh, look what they just did there. You know, they're not really saved. They don't really love you. Uh, and um, Jesus can tell the Father, I died for those sins. It's taken care of. Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation. Now that's a big word, isn't it? Uh, propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the whole world now propitiation he has taken our place and he has suffered and died for us to for our sins past present and future and so we can be considered right in God's sight, forgiven, redeemed. And then verse 3, Now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. You know, some people say, Oh, I, I'm a Christian. And, uh, and they may be put on a good show. They're actors like the Pharisees and religious leaders, the Sadducees in Israel when Jesus was there. They were very good actors, very good pretenders. And they would stand on the street corner and make long prayers. They loved to have people say, Rabbi, and that sort of thing. Um, they were pretenders. But God knows. God knows every person's heart. There are famous, famous uh, uh, mega church pastors, which so often it happens. And not every mega church is, of course, the pastor is wicked and sinful uh, and hi a hypocrite or actor. But there are some, and that happens. Uh, but God knows their heart, and eventually they will fall, even if it takes quite a few years. And we've had several recently that uh, they were caught in sin, and or uh, because someone uh, told on them. But uh, it always comes out. 
if a person is living that way. Uh, uh, years ago, it was Jimmy Swaggart, and he may still have ministry today, but it's not like what it used to be. I was in the Assemblies of God when that happened, and he actually was asked by the Assemblies of God uh, when he was caught um, uh, into pornography and then uh, call girls. Uh, and, but they were, he was told that he needed to get out of the ministry uh, for a year or so and make sure that he's right with the Lord and his family is, but he didn't do that. He refused to do that. And so as I believe that he was asked to leave the Assemblies of God, but he had a tremendous ministry before that. He was very talented in music and in, uh, speaking and uh, uh, outreaches and so on. So. God knows the heart and what's going on. And if there's uh, sin in our lives, we need to get it right with the Lord. And that's, uh, God wants us to live holy lives, to be holy as I am holy, he says. And that's what we see here that now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. All right. Now we're not saved by keeping the commandments, but we are to live for the Lord, keeping his commandments after we are saved. And again, we don't keep our salvation by keeping the commandments, but it shows that we are his. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Hmm. So if you say that you're saved, but then you go out and live like the world and doing the things of the world, then you're not really his. You're not really saved. But whoever keeps his word, that's why we study the word of God, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. Uh, if you're a Christian and you've gotten away from the Lord, you're miserable. Uh, I know there's times in my life when I was miserable because I'd gotten away from the Lord. There's nothing more miserable than a Christian who knows they're sinning and doing what they shouldn't be doing. You need to get right with the Lord. Ask his forgiveness, and he will forgive. As First John 1, 9 says, as we uh, just looked at it yesterday, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And sometimes people will say things like, well, it's just mistakes that we're making. No, he's talking about sin. There are such things as gossip and pornography. There is taking God's name in vain and many other things that sometimes Christians do that they need to get right with God and ask his forgiveness and give them victory in their lives, all of us, and that we might walk wholly uprightly before him. And uh, so we thank the Lord for that help that he gives us. Yes, and I thank you for praying for us and our families too. And we pray for you folks. And uh, right here it says then, uh, brethren, <clears throat> Let's go back to verse 6 there, the new paragraph, actually. Um, he who says he abides in him ought also himself also to walk just as he walked, just as Jesus walked. <clears throat> Capitalized there. Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, brothers and sisters, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write to you, which the thing is true in him and in you because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. So it's the same commandment that he's given before, that we love God, 
<coughs> excuse me, and that we love our fellow man. Um, that's the same commandment. It's uh, all of the commandments are summed up in those two, that we love the Lord God our, with all our heart, soul, and mind, and that we love our fellow men and our brothers and sisters um, with a whole heart. Again, a new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him and in you because the darkness is passing away. Every day we're getting closer to being with the Lord. Every day the earth is getting closer to God's judgment on it. Um, and for us, he's not going to judge us. He's going to take us home to heaven to be with him, the bride of Christ. And the true light is already shining which is the light of the Word of God, the Holy Spirit in our hearts and lives, the testimony that we have for the Lord. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. So if you say that you're truly born again, but you have hate in your heart for somebody, maybe it's something they did to you, uh, and you still you can't forgive them, then God says he can't forgive you. And if that is there, you need to get right with the Lord and ask his forgiveness and forgive those people who have wronged you. He who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But, he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. We as brothers and sisters in Christ, we love each other. Uh, if something happens between us, we ask forgiveness for the other person. And... Maybe it's even people in the world, though, that have sinned against us. Then we forgive them, even as Jesus on the cross forgave, forgave those who were crucifying him. Uh, even as Stephen, the first Christian martyr, was forgiving those who were stoning him to death. Verse 12, I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. When you're saved, you've turned to Christ. You've turned away from sin. You've turned to Christ to save you. And he's forgiven you. I write to you fathers. Okay, those have been Christians for a while. Because you have known him who is from the beginning. So as you go along and you've been a Christian for quite a few years, which is my case, um, I'm 76 years old, and I was saved when I was nine years old. So you can see that I've been a Christian for some time. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. So you're, you're a Christian, and you have uh, known the Lord for a while. You've turned away from the world, and you've turned to him to save you. And you're living and walking with the Lord, even though maybe you're, you haven't been a Christian very long. Uh, I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. So all of us know the Father and know the Son. And, uh, but we're children in the family of God. We have to come as little children in order to be saved. Jesus says you have to become as a little child. You have to have simple faith and trust. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. So you've led some people to the Lord. You know what it's like to lead and to um, bring children into the family of God. I've written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. 
Now, I was thinking before, uh, like Daniel and his three friends, they were eunuchs. They didn't have any children. They didn't have, they weren't married. They just lived for the Lord in that condition. However, they don't have physical children, or they didn't have, but you know what? They had spiritual children. To this day, they're getting spiritual children and uh, others like them. And I think about those that can't get married for one reason or another or are not married, and uh, but they can have spiritual children. Uh, and so that's the way Paul was. He was not married. Uh, the other apostles were, but he had spiritual children. He had Timothy and Titus, but many, many others that were his spiritual children. And so God can help us uh, that we will have children in the body of Christ and uh, uh, spiritual children. Verse 15, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And then the tribulation time, that's the thing the Lord points out, is those that this world is their final resting place. This is They love the things in the world. Remember uh, when Lot was leaving Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, they were told not to look back. But what happened to his wife? She looked back because she loved the things that were in Sodom and Gomorrah, she, in Sodom there. She loved those things. It wasn't a love for God. It was a love for the world and the things in the world. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We have these things in the world and we use them for the ministry and so on, but we don't love them. We know that they're going to be destroyed. And only thing that's going to last are those who have Christ living in their heart and those that we've won to the Lord we can take with us to heaven. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and here it is... Uh, in uh, three categories, three main categories, the lust of the flesh, and the flesh gets us in trouble lots, right? The lust of the eyes, all right, the eyes can get us in trouble, and the pride of life, pride. That's how Satan fell, was through pride. But uh, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Amen. This living for the Lord, not hanging on to anything in this world, but loving our brothers and sisters in Christ, loving our family, our wife, our, our husband, depending on... Uh, and our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, all those that come for us, from us, we pray for them, that they will come to know Christ as Lord and Savior. Little children, it is the last hour. Now, if it was the last hour then, you know, I think for us as we're looking around and uh, don't hang on to the things here because we're going to be out of here soon. And whether... Uh, the Lord takes us and we have our individual uh, rapture or uh, we're raptured in the church. We're getting ready to go home to be with the Lord at any moment. We don't hang on to the things of this world. Brother Gabriel there in Kenya, Kasuma, the Lord bless you. And another brother, uh, Man Sia Lapa. Uh, and the Lord bless you folks as we're studying the word here in First John chapter 2. And now we're at verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, lust of eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, 
but he who does the will of God abides forever. Amen. We're living for the Lord day by day. Little children, it is the last hour, and it's getting shorter and shorter till the time of Jesus' return. And as you have heard, that the Antichrist is coming. And yes, we've been taught about that, and uh, we've talked about it in this Bible study. The Antichrist, uh, even now it says, many Antichrists have come. So you have a lot in the world that are already acting as the Antichrist, and there's going to be one who is going to be filled with Satan, and he is going to uh, rule the world for uh, seven years, um, but and uh, by which we know that it is the last hour. We know that as we see things around us, we can see that it's getting closer and closer and that there's wickedness on every side. Uh, it was interesting that just recently uh, at a rally, that a lady that's running for, well, she's vice president right now, Kamala Harris, but there was a rally that she had and two Christians went there and they shouted out at one point when she was talking about abortion and how she was encouraging that and making sure that the women would have right to abortions and actually they have them right up to the time the baby is born and uh, in some states. And the thing is, uh, she's encouraging that and, and that sort of thing. And uh, so they shouted out, these two Christians, they shouted out, Jesus is God. Jesus is Lord. So there's two of them that shouted that out. And she stopped what she was saying. And she said, you're in the wrong place. You need to go down to the other one down the street, uh, which is a smaller one. But at that, uh, that was uh, uh, pro former President Trump was down at the other rally. But instead of this woman saying, oh, yes, no, she said, no, uh, you need to go down to the other one. In other words, she didn't agree with what they had to say, that Jesus is Lord and Jesus is God. If she believed that, that's all she would have to say. And she goes to churches that are liberal and don't believe that. But anyway, and someone at um, uh, rally that the uh, vice president is running uh, on the other team, <laughs> Trump's team, uh, they shouted, as people said that, and he said to them when they said, Jesus is Lord or Jesus is God, that he said, Amen. All right, that's the way it should be, isn't it? And so um, we should say in our hearts, Jesus is Lord. And with our mouth, we should confess it, Jesus is Lord. So it says that... Uh, those that didn't believe that, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. So even during that time, there were, of course, persecution going on and so on. But it's not just persecution. It's some that start and they are not truly born again, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. So don't be surprised. That will happen in your churches. People that seem like they're Christians, seem like they're born again, but they're not. And eventually they will reveal their real position and uh, will go away. But you have an anointing. I'm the Holy One. When you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit in you, and he anoints you, and you ha know all things. He teaches us all things. He uses the word, though. Some people say, well, I don't need the Bible. Well, that's not true. You do need the Bible. He uses the Bible to speak to us. Verse 21, I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is of the truth. 
So we have the word of God, which is true in every bit. Let every man be a liar, God says, but God is not a liar. And he's given us his word. Who is a liar, but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. If you don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah, a Jewish friend, you are not telling the truth. You are lying like Satan is lying about Jesus. Because if you knew the truth, you would receive Jesus as your Messiah, as your Savior. He is an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. And if you say, oh, I believe in one God, but you don't believe in the Son, you're not truly saved. You're a liar. And uh, we have to say that to Muslims. We have to say that to uh, Jews that haven't received Jesus as their Messiah and Lord. And we have to say that to all others that deny that Jesus is God. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. They go together. You can't have one without the other. And uh, since Jesus came and died on the cross and uh, the temple has been destroyed, the truth of God's word is going out that Jesus is his son. And if you receive his son, you receive the father. If you receive the father, you want to receive the son. Therefore, let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, the message of the gospel, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. You see the word abide. We and Jesus talked about it in uh, John chapter 15, abiding in him. And this is a promise that he has promised us eternal life. If you are in Christ, you abide in him. You will stay in him. You will trust in him. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. There's going to be a lot of deceptions in the last days. We're already seeing many deceptions. And good is being called evil, and evil is being called good. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. That's the Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus said to them that the Holy Spirit for the apostles was with them, but then he would be in them. And so he breathed on them and gave them a temporary filling until they the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost would receive from him abides in you. And you did not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie. The Holy Spirit does not lie to us. He tells us the truth. He uses God's word to show us the truth. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. We abide in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. And I've told you before, when I was in Vietnam, doing some things I shouldn't have been doing, and uh, I knew that I was a Christian, I would go to heaven, but I would be ashamed as at uh, meeting Jesus. And I don't want to be that way. I want to be upright, living upright before him and following his commands and loving him and loving our fellow Christians and those in the world. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. All right. So if you're truly born again, you want to uh, keep his word. You want to live for him. And uh, we have the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And then we will show forth love 
to our Heavenly Father. Father, we just thank you for your word and so precious and so helpful to us. And Father, we want to live for you right to the very time that we go to meet you and that we will not be ashamed as we go to meet you, but we'll be on fire for you and leading souls to you and uh, having that first love that you gave us when we were first saved. So we thank you, Father. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray that those there will receive Jesus as their Messiah and Lord. And we pray for the, those around the world that are suffering for you. Oh, Lord, just be very near and dear to them. Help them to know at all times that they are in a temporary situation. They will be in jail, as you said, for 10 days. And that's a, a short time, but it will be over. And we thank you that there is an end, that they will be with you throughout eternity, and you will bless them mightily. And so we pray all these things with thanksgiving in Jesus' precious name. Amen. The Lord bless you, brothers and sisters in Christ, and we'll spend eternity together, and we can visit more at that time. But I'll see you, God willing, tomorrow. Uh, shalom.